I know a lot of you guys right now are looking up here going, wow, these comedians are getting bigger and bigger. <laughs> Whatever the case, you guys, I am the alternative Iglesias. I'm not Julio, I'm not Enrique, I'm Gabriel Iglesias, I'm the fluffy one. I say fluffy because that is the politically correct term. For those of you that don't know, there are five levels of fatness and fluffy is one of the levels. That's right, there's big, healthy, husky, fluffy, and damn! I'm still number four. People go, how do you know when you're number five? Because people will tell you, you know, you try to get on an elevator that's crowded and people stop you and go, mm-mm. Damn! If you go to Disneyland and little kids want to ride you, <laughs> Damn. Seriously though, Iglesias, it's been a curse since I was a kid, you guys. And ladies, if that's what you want out of a man is the sexy guy, go for it. But I'm going to warn you, in the long run, the pretty guy, he's going to lie to you, cheat on you, and break your heart. That's why you need to start giving fluffy guys a chance. <laughs> Seriously, because the worst thing we're going to do is have dinner without you. Do you want sexy or faithful? I don't know. <laughs> oh my God, I gotta be careful, I know. It's kind of steep. If I fall, show's over. <laughs> that would suck. There'd be people outside waiting. Of course, any here live where authorities believe Fluffy lost control. Six people were seriously injured, four were rushed to the hospital. Authorities had this to say. Damn! <laughs> They'd interview people. Ma'am, what happened? It got dark! <laughs> Sir, what did you see? I know I mess around with the voices and stuff. People ask me, do you do that? You know, is that you or is that a special microphone? No, it's me. I'm a lot of fun, especially to my girlfriend, because, man, when we role play, I take it to the next level. <laughs> oh, yeah, man. Our favorite game to role play is White House, the 92 edition. I come home at 4 o'clock in the morning, right? <laughs> She's like, who is it? I'm like, you know who it is. <laughs> She's like, Senor, I don't speak English. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So we got driven over here to the theater uh, by somebody who's here from Montreal. And it's kind of weird because they got lost. And I thought that was kind of strange. You know, set the GPS or something. Because I got one back home and I use it for everything. Because I love the voice that it has. It's not like the old generic ones that go, a three quarter tenths of a mile, right turn. The one I have now sounds like a hot girl. No lie, I know where I'm going, but I still program her just to hear, you know. In three quarter tenths of a mile, left turn. Yeah! Oh yeah, man, I wish she would do more. Like if you were to do what she tells you to do, I wish she would verbally reward you. Like if she says make a left turn and you make the left turn, I wish you would go, uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. Right turn. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, and I know I do the girl voice, you guys. It freaks people out sometimes. You know, that's my favorite voice. I love to do that at drive-thrus. <laughs> oh, it's the best, you know. I'll pull up at two in the morning. Back in the McDonald's, how can I help you? And I'll go, oh my god. Oh, so sorry, not too long, got a horse and a shake. Oh my god, yes! <laughs> and I pull up to the window. They're not expecting Pikachu. Uh-uh, man, I pull up. <laughs> the best is when the guy starts to look for the girl. Oh, that's priceless. I think he ate her, man. <laughs> I just want to have a good time, that's all. And my brother, I love him. I have one brother, but he's giving me a hard time. He's got these two kids living next door, obviously with their parents and stuff, but they're always messing with him. 
they're riding their bicycles in the street and going off the ramp and using his front lawn as the cushion. And he's telling me the story. These kids are messing me up. They're breaking my sprinkler heads and everything. I go, have you talked to them? They don't listen. So I tell him, I says, let me take care of your problem. He goes, go for it. Let's see what you got. Three days later, I get a phone call. I don't know how you did it, but these kids will not come nowhere near the house. The parents came over and they gave me $300 to fix the lawn and pay for the sprinklers. What did you say? I go, I didn't say anything. What'd you do? I can't tell you. <laughs> Three days later, we go out for karaoke and I got so drunk, you guys. I was like, Whoa, what's new, pussycat? Oh, I was gone. Ah, gone. <laughs> My brother goes, you're drunk, huh? I go, yeah, I'm drunk. How did you keep the kids away from my house? Okay, it's what I did. I passed up flyers to your neighbors that said that you were a registered sex offender. <laughs> That's why I can't handle alcohol, you guys. I, this whole week, I'm not drinking at all, because if I get drunk, I don't want that story. I can't handle going international. Shoot, being in America is hard enough. I got thrown out of a Scottish bar and I was performing there. <laughs> but they were giving me free alcohol all night, right? And I started getting loud. Woo! Bartender goes, hey buddy, you okay? You having a good time? I was so drunk, I did this. I'm having a great day. <laughs> People around me, oh my God, are you Scottish? I was like, hey! What part of Scotland are you from? Uh, downtown. <laughs> are you here by yourself? Oh no, I'm not here by myself. Donkey! <laughs> I love you guys, thank you very much. Thank you. That is the extent of my French. <laughs> that was amazing, thank you. I think you guys freaked everybody out right now. <laughs> like, people in the back, oh my God, I think they know him. <laughs> Did he bring his family? That's a lot of people crossing into Canada. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Times have changed, Montreal. Times have changed. First things first, I got to let you guys know, I have now realized that you guys have some of the most amazing air quality I have ever experienced. <laughs> and I say this because I come from Los Angeles, and I didn't realize how messed up our air is until I came over here. You have oxygen in your air. You can feel it. I got off the plane. I was like, oh my God, I can do math. It was very impressive, you know. Thank you for the sign, I see it. Thank you. You made a sign like I'm a wrestler. <laughs> it's the showdown in his town, yeah. Thank you, that is amazing, man. And it's great to be back here, 100 pounds lighter. Yeah. Just a little bit. Thank you. I know some of you right here in the front are looking at me like, well, how big were you? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Hercules, Hercules, yeah, straight up. <laughs> no, man, uh, the problem is, is that, you know, yes, I have the nickname Fluffy, but I ran into a situation where I found out I was type two diabetic. And so it was for medical reasons that I had to lose weight and lose it fast. And so fortunately, I got a strong support team of friends and family, and they said, look, man, you gotta lose weight. And of course, some people are concerned. What happens if you keep losing weight? What are we gonna call you? What are we gonna call you? Hey, I lift weights, call me Buffy. I don't care, okay? <laughs> the point is, is that I'm trying to be around for my family, for my friends, and be around for you guys, so you can't hate on that. Huh? I love you too, bro. And it's not easy to lose weight. Believe me, I'm 38 years old. I've been trying for a long time, but when someone tells you you're facing death, you wake up really quick. <laughs> in one more year, in one more year, my son Frankie is gonna be uh, eligible for a passport and I'm gonna be able to bring him up here to visit. Uh, yeah. 
Now, I know some of you are saying, wait a minute, eligible? What's going on with Frankie? What's wrong with your son? He's technically my stepson, and we haven't gotten the full permission from the other side of the party, if you know what I mean. And uh, right now, you know, he, he always does what he does, and the only way that I can get him to pay attention or focus is when I embarrass him. And now the biggest thing is affection. That's what really bothers him. Not necessarily for me, because if I hug him, he's cool with that, because I give those quick bro hugs. You know, bro hug, hey, hey, what's up? You know, real fast. However, if his mom is standing next to me and I reach over and I grab her hand, he sees that as gross. And I, I can't help it. I love doing that. And I love embarrassing him because I, I grab her hand and he's like, that's gross, dad. I go, that's not gross. Baby, open your mouth. Uh, uh. <laughs> ah! And I will take it there every single time. Any chance I can embarrass him, the best one yet. We have a lot of parents in the house tonight, right? Parents? Yeah. As parents, we expect our children to go to bed by a certain time. My son's cutoff is 11 p.m., all right, which is pretty, you know, it's very generous. Every now and then, he'll push the envelope and he'll stay awake till 11.30. So then I'm like, hey, dude, come on, time to go to bed. Oh, I didn't know what time it was. Yeah, whatever, you're only holding a clock, you know? <laughs> so he plays it off, goes in his room, shuts the door. <laughs> then he takes a towel and he rolls up the towel and he puts it under the door so that when he turns on the TV, I can't see the light coming from the TV, right? But hello, you're gonna do that, cover the rest of the stupid door. <laughs> he doesn't do that and he turns on this bright plasma TV and all the light hits the hallway and it looks like immigration's breaking into his bedroom. <laughs> I don't say anything, but what happens is he'll stay awake too late and he sleeps through the alarm. And it's an alarm alarm, you know? <laughs> Whole house awake, him? <clears throat> So I walk downstairs and I go in his room, alarm's going, there's a towel on the floor. <laughs> Frankie, wake up. Nothing. So I shake him. Frankie, wake up. You know what happens when I shake my son? He eats in his sleep. <laughs> oh yeah, I shake him, he does this. Um, rum, 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 rum. He doesn't want to wake up, so you know what I do? I get on top of the bed, and I slowly lay on top of him. And I apply, you're shaking your head, you ain't right. I know, right? <laughs> I lay on top of him, and I apply my full weight, and you can hear him. Oh God, oh God, you're too big, you're too big. And then I whisper in his ear, that's what your mom said. Did you guys have a 